So I made the mistake of recently checking on the zip attachments for some of the more recent emails I've gotten. Uh, the majority of them look like the same JavaScript generated material to my other videos. But the mistake I made is the fact that I came across one that looks a lot different. Uh, yeah, this was just, this is just insane. Unrecognizable. Until realizing that there's an awful lot of repetitiveness with this in the form of the word var spelled backwards. And how a lot of these things don't really make sense in the order they come in unless they are backwards. But even so, it's a lot of backwards code that doesn't really look like it contains a lot of the kind of code that we've seen so far. So, so I'm sucked into processing this one now and seeing what I can do with it. Okay, so the first step is going to be here. Make a copy of this in my working folder. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove this conditional coding wrap that comments out all of the code. So the conditional coding would mean, is this in a Windows environment being run by the Internet Explorer JavaScript engine? And if it is so, then yeah, let's do this code. And if it isn't, then the code isn't going to have access to the ActiveX objects and other things that a system is going to have on it. So we wrapped, unwrapped the conditional comments. And now we see how that simply reduces to a big string with a always true evaluation of the variable content, the string itself. Well, the string is the string is definitely not something that you think that you can execute code from, except for the fact that we're executing the variable content, not the actual string, or we are processing the string, which ends here and then is split, this being the equivalent of the split command. Okay, so what we're going to actually do is just convert this document into the HTML. Uh, we're going to write this whole string operation out uh, in the body part in an inline script. So we'll first wrap the code with these tags and change the eval to our write command and add the tags for a text area to help preserve all the special characters like the greater than symbols and things like that that wouldn't render with an ordinary document right. Okay. Now we can go ahead and save this as an HTML file. And watch what happens. And there's the result. So now we have code that we can copy from here. Now that looks like a program. Now that that's copied, no idea if it actually did anything. 812 lines, only what we started with. Okay, let's open a new document here. Put this into it. And convert to JavaScript. Just take a quick look. What we have here is quite a few lines. Quite a few lines of variable declarations. And in this case, it looks like they've just fragmented everything right up into variables. These don't look like garbage variables. 
these look like every piece of the entire text that we need. Every one of those pieces just looks like a piece of the puzzle. There are a few that maybe don't match, but I bet you they're going to be combined with something and then we take the leftmost five characters and reverse them and then get the letter T out of it for the get command. So, well, we do have some comments in here to break up the code. And they're present in more than a few places. I got rid of quite a few comments that was with the code, the same comment used over and over. So in addition to those strings, we also seem to have a whole lot of functions here whose only job is to return back the argument. So that's that's just layering complexity for the sake of complexity. But that also makes it easy to evaluate those parts and eliminate them. There's quite a few. We then, after all these variable declarations, because remember this is just still a variable, there's our first actual code to execute. It's a loop that's going to do something. I have a feeling I know where we're going to go with that one. Because then we come down to here with the standard, you know, here's a flag. If this flag is the value that I just set it, then let's do something. Um, so this do, and then we're back to functions here. So these functions are things that are called the helpers. So that's all the code that gets executed. These are, you know, hexadecimal notations for for numbers. So these are making a table of character mapping codes, perhaps, and, and an array of codes to look up and cross back and forth. So these are going to be involved in encoding and decoding characters, either parts of the strings that we're trying to find for the code here, you know, these things, or it could be something to do with the actual content coming downloaded in. I'm going to go through and fish all of these dummy functions out and put them all at the beginning of the document. Group them all together because then I'm going to go through them. So let me just jump to the point here now where I've copied all of these things up together. Because taking them out of sequence and putting them in a different place is not going to impact the linearity of this code execution. Okay, so I've just finished moving all these function parts up and out of the way and compressed the spaces out of the variable declarations. And we are at 788 lines. Okay, now the nice part about these, if we have a function that is simply returning the argument, then we're going to use a little trick. Let's look to see where this is used. What we're going to do is we're going to replace that function name with nothing, which will leave simply the expression in the brackets. So nothing to act on it. And that is the argument itself. This will go through pretty quickly if we just go through like this, replace nothing. Go to here, replace that with nothing. And continue. Okay, now for these last ones, this will be a little trickier because KM is going to be in a thousand places, but what we can just do is change this up a little bit. Just replace that with the bracket. I should change two occurrences, as should this. As should this. There we go. So now these functions are useless and gone.
Okay, so next thing I'm going to do here is quickly buzz through and just clean up these ones that are all in line. Well, for some reason, these are all identical. This just simply becomes jar at with quotes around the whole thing. Seventeen of those. So didn't even go out of any great lengths to make them differently. That just all replaced very nicely. That probably takes care of almost all of the inline processing that I could do, unfortunately. So, that's part of their string processing that can be done here. The rest of it all gets put to use in those sections. So is there a way that I can do this other than manually? Yeah, there will be. All right, so we copy this into a new document. And might as well actually just save this right to begin with as an HTML document. Let's start off. We're going to do this all in line in the body. Let's go right straight to the bottom. Okay, now. Focus on the parts we're going to need here. This entire variable, the more I look at it, the more I see that this is actually just one single string or an array of strings to be broken up. Um, I'm going to make that a false evaluation. That way I don't have to worry about it executing that. It will execute the rest. Okay. All right. Let's just simply, we're worried about, we're going to process the string parts. Let's comment out all this part. If HTML allows us to actually do that. And instead of letting the system evaluate that variable, because I don't know how it will print out an array. We're just going to do this. We're going to take all the comment, all the stuff in between the braces. Write it out. And actually, just to test this, we're going to comment out the rest of this code right now, too. This should just be our first attempt to see if this string gets printed. There we go. It looks to be three websites, three URLs. Realistically, that's only as far as I need to go. If I assume that I know that everything else is simply obfuscated code to download the file from here. This is assuming that, yeah, there we go. Most likely malicious file. Two out of 56 when it was last analyzed a little while ago. So somebody else submitted this file. And I'm telling it to rescan fresh just to see if, uh, you know, over the course of however much time it is, a couple of hours or anything. Only McAfee suspects it of being something. 